Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. I'm Aaron and today we're gonna to do a little project for my friend Keith Rucker over at VintageMachinery.org. If you're watching my channel, you almost certainly know Keith already and um, I just offered to do something for him. He showed uh, rebuilding a buffer, or I'm um, sorry, a Baldor grinder and he put wire wheels on both sides of it to help remove paint and deburr and stuff like that. And um, my personal opinion is that that's very dangerous if you get your hand in that guard, it will pull you in. And that's another reason why you don't wear gloves around rotating machinery is that increases your risk of something bad happening. So I offered uh, some extra parts that I had around and said, hey, why don't I send you these parts and you can cut out the hubs, mount those on there, and it'll hold your bearings in and you won't have you know those guards for your hands to get caught in. And Thinking about it later, I thought, you know what, why don't I just do something nice for Keith? Rather than sending all this extra cast iron that's just gonna go in the scrap bucket, um, we can go ahead and do the machining for him. And uh, he can just put them on and enjoy them right away rather than having to do work himself. So to do that, I bought a three and three and five eight, yeah, three and five eighths or 92 millimeter uh, carbide tipped hole saw. So that should make pretty quick work of drilling out this center center hub of the uh, cast iron guards. I went with cast or with uh, carbide teeth just because I don't know how hard this is. I'm guessing it's not gonna be a big deal at all and a, a, a bimetal one would have been fine, but I opted for carbide. And then what I also decided to try was a form tool. So or a, a radius tool, I guess you could say. So this is braced carbide, carbide with an eighth inch radius on it, which matches up perfectly with my Baldor buffer which is basically what we're emulating is the, the parts that did exist from the factory. So to uh, mount this hole saw, I'm gonna have to open up my kit of Milwaukee hole saws and I hope this is uh, uh, the quick change arbor works right on that thing. If not, um, I guess we're gonna have to go and try and find one at a store, but I'm pretty sure this will go right in there. The uh, pilot drill was actually not gonna be doing anything because we will be going straight in the arbor hole of these uh, parts. So for work holding, I think what we'll do is just put this in the vise on a just a scrap piece of steel, drill and tap, probably just two holes is enough. And that way we can mount this guy in on that piece of, of uh, scrap steel, um, hold it in there secure with the hub, the piece that we want to remain and then we'll just clamp on the perimeter so it doesn't throw the excess once we break through. But hopefully this will be a fairly quick part or a fairly quick project. We can get these cleaned up and maybe even shoot some primer on them and then put them in a flat rate box to uh, send to Georgia. So we'll start on the mill and check this out. I think we're all set up here. This is a scrap fixture plate. I bought a whole bunch of material about a year and a half ago, and this was among them. Uh, I was out of a small CNC shop, and the guy there, you know, basically gave away all of his um, drops and everything. So fortunate enough to jump on that. And so we've got pieces like this lying around that are perfect for jobs like this. So I've got the rear jaw on the vise flipped around. This is not a super, super sturdy setup, but it's way good enough for what we're doing here. And with that big hole, I can put, send my, uh, my pilot drill down into a safe place. So I guess if we want to, we can kind of stay in line with the, uh, the Y axis. Yeah, I guess we can do that. So these holes are three inches apart. Doesn't really matter where they go as long as the uh, center bore goes down through the um, through the, the space in the vise as opposed to hitting the top jaw or the uh, hard jaw. Let's get this guy mounted up. I think I've devised a way we can make this nice and stable without it uh, taking a bunch of time getting it set up. So if we just put the clamps on 
like this. Um, that'd be fine for holding it down, but then of course, as soon as this cutter goes all the way through, then this will the clamps will pull down and anyway, the excess will flop around and be not as safe as I'd like. So if we thread these guys in, they'll serve as jacks and just push against the plate on the back side here. And this one back here will actually miss our fixture plate, so I'm just gonna use a little chunk of aluminum just so I'm not putting yet another dimple ding in the top of my vise. That is way good enough for what we're doing here. So I don't love this setup because of the hex on the drive arbor, um, but I think we can probably still do this safely and without breaking anything. Um, I went ahead and put in my Jacob Super Chuck rather than the Albrecht um, Keyless Chuck. And I think we'll be gl glad we've got the carbide teeth because I think we're gonna hit the bolts Boy, that's a lot of run out. Okay, we're getting there. Well, it did it. Interesting. Now that we've got this one done, I think what I wanna do is go ahead and uh, finish it, just see how things go. Uh, make sure nothing surprising happens. So to do that, what we're gonna do is put this in the three jaw and turn down to fit nice and tight on this bore. So that way the OD of this is concentric with this inner bore, which is the important one. And then we'll uh, drill and tap in the mandrel for a 5 8 11 and then stick that sucker in there to hold it. And uh, then we'll turn the OD and put the radius on and then this one will be done. As we get set up here in the lathe, I wanted to say thank you to one of the subscribers who had um, put me on the right track to the right answer in getting rid of the rattle sound. So, he wasn't exactly right, but it put me in the right spot. 
So what I used is some of this Gear Shields Extra Heavy Extreme Pressure Lubricant. So this is uh, a heavy industrial oil or a heavy industrial grease that's kind of used a lot in uh, oil uh, extraction and mining and stuff like that used for open gearboxes. So that's essentially what my clutch is in some ways anyway. And the friction disc with all the teeth on the OD of it, you can check it out in the previous videos. That is just rattling just enough. It's, it's got just a tiny bit of wear in it and that was enough for it to kind of click back and forth while the, uh, the clutch was not engaged. And so by putting this around the perimeter, it holds it into the pulley housing. And because it's designed for open gearboxes, it doesn't sling off. So that's not a permanent fix. Uh, getting a brand new clutch plate would probably, or a friction material plate would probably do it. I'll see uh, what Monarch wants for that. It's not a, it's just a nuisance. It's not hurting anything. Um, but I do like having the lathe in as good a condition as possible, obviously. So anyway, thank you very much. I'm forgetting the name right now, but I'll put it on screen uh, for uh, suggesting that I put this on the inner splines of that clutch assembly. That, that wasn't the issue, but it put me in the, the right spot to dis discover what the issue was. So now we can hear what the lathe sounds like sans rattle. So the motor's been on for a little while and still no click, click, click from the uh, clutch plate. So still, uh, the solution is still working. There we go, nice and snug. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a recess here. So when we um, have the bolt in here, it'll be pressing firmly on here. And this, uh, this thing's not gonna move at all. Can't remember if I've ever mentioned it or not, but the tailstock on my lathe, as well as my old LeBlond, has two nuts that clamped the uh, tailstock in place. And that's extremely strong, but it's not convenient at all if you're moving the tailstock back and forth a lot. So one thing I did when I had the little blonde is purchased a Lowell service wrench. I can't remember, maintenance wrench, or I can't remember what style that is, but it's reversible and allows um, fairly easy unclamping of the uh, tailstock. Having a quick clamp cam mechanism would be better, but this lathe was, purchased or specced for heavy duty work and this um, clamps harder than the, the cam style. So in order to upgrade and make things a little bit easier, I went ahead and purchased a fine tooth uh, one and a 16th wrench. So this is kind of a cheapy paramount, but um, I think it's gonna work out wonderfully. So it's reversing, which is important. And um, having the angle on here is gonna make things a little bit easier when the, the uh, compound is turned over or otherwise in the way, this is gonna help me get in there a little bit easier. And then loosening it, flip the lever. And this is a 72 tooth. So even a very small arc uh, movement of the wrench is going to move that nut and loosen or tighten it. So a little upgrade there. I might cut it off, I might not. We'll have to see after I use it a little bit, but um, if you have that same problem, highly recommend getting a ratcheting wrench of some kind.
Hopefully one extra washer will work. I don't have any shorter bolts than this. Uh, maybe. All right, that should be plenty strong enough. We're not uh, exactly hogging material off of here, so that whole saw was uh, three and five eighths and didn't cut, you know, round, but um, we shouldn't have to take much off because we're aiming for three inch 500. almost cleaned up. Yeah, so the mounting surface on the back of this is not machined. So we're only gonna get so, so good on this and it only needs to be so good, but. Well, that's disappointing. So the hole saw actually cut undersize and we're already um, below our target. So that kind of sucks. Oh well, there's not, uh, not a lot I can do about it now. They're slightly smaller. The bearing can still fit in there and all that. That's not a problem. It's just, it's kind of lousy. Go slower another step just to uh, give me a better chance with us heavy interruption in this brazed carbide. Pretty good. that'll be way good enough for what we're aiming for. We'll uh, go ahead and deburr that backside with a file just because it's so out of, out of round or out of uh, true. Using that SNMG tool I normally use is gonna take off a ton of material. So I picked up some Norton Beartex rolls of uh, Scotch Bright. Norton doesn't want me to say that. It's the other guys. All right, I think, uh, you know, it's going to be undersized, but it is what it is.
Well, that went mostly to plan. Unfortunately, these things are just a little bit too inaccurate to get the results I wanted. Uh, the other thing was my fault. Um, annoyed at myself for not getting a four inch hole saw, giving myself more, you know, waste material to, uh, to you know, allow for mistakes or allow for that much run out. I figured having an eighth of an inch was gonna be enough, um, but obviously it wasn't. And because of that, they're a little bit small. Um, will they work as they are? Can these be installed and do the job they um, are meant to do? Absolutely, no doubt about it. So I'll think about it, uh, whether I want to start from scratch and make some brand new ones, I might do that. I'm pretty annoyed about how these turned out and just the, I mean, the poor workmanship, you know, castings are only ever gonna be so good. So I get that and I'm not gonna rag on anybody for um, castings not being great, but just the, where the holes are in relation to the, the counter bores here, um, just everything's just a little bit meh. Uh, I don't know exactly how old this machine was. It's probably from, you know, 70s at the newest. And so quality control wasn't as high then. I, I really don't know what to say. I'm, I'm, I'm annoyed uh, partially at myself and partially just at the situation here. But um, we will figure it out. I have no, uh, no qualms there, but thanks for checking this out. Uh, it's always a learning process. And if you check in the comments, you will find that I definitely did it wrong. So uh, there's always that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.